We begin with the shooting at YouTube headquarters in the Bay Area. Usually the shooters are men, but in this case it was a woman. With us now is Dr. Carol Lieberman, forensic psychiatrist in Beverly Hills. How unusual? Yes, absolutely unusual. In 2014, the FBI did a study, and they found that out of 160 active shooter incidents from 2000 to 2013, there were only six out of 160 women. Six of these of these shooters were women. And that actually goes along with um, the suicide rate, too. Women usually do not choose guns as the means of suicide. Why the difference? Well, a number of reasons. One is, you know, using a gun is a very masculine kind of thing just by its nature. It's a phallic symbol. It's also very strong, powerful, brutal. Um, it's less personal. Women would tend to uh, try to work things out, which, in fact, this woman did. She did call YouTube a number of times, and she got very frustrated because nothing that she was able to talk to them about got them to change what they were doing with her YouTube. And, you know, also women would tend to think of other solutions, like if they can't make it happen themselves, they might think of going to an attorney. But this woman was very different. I mean, she isn't a typical woman. I watched a number of her videos uh, before they took them all down, and she is clearly has some kind of mental illness. She's paranoid. I mean, that's why it impacted her so much more that they were taking away her money and and um, you know causing her to have less viewers and so on. But she was motivated by something stronger, you know, some kind of um, paranoid feeling, illness that was making her take things into her own hands more strongly. You know, we always worry when we have these shooting incidents about copycats. Uh, Mm -hmm. Even though it is unusual, as you pointed out, for a woman to be a shooter, is there any real uh, reason to be concerned that more women, frankly, uh, obviously ones that have some some mental illnesses, uh, might want to go down this road? Sure. And, you know, what's interesting is, that um, terrorists have figured out they are trying to recruit more women uh, to create attacks because they are not suspected as being possible active shooters. I'm wondering from a research perspective, uh, when you try and, and look at the women who do become shooters and then you try and compare them to the the men who, who go on these uh, gun sprees, uh, if it's hard to find answers because we don't have that many female offenders. I mean, you can't get your sample size because there's so few of them to try and get some answers. Yes, that's true. And the ones that we do know about, most of them, if not all of them, most of them, uh, it was a romantic, you know, it was a woman scorned. And of course, that's what they original oh, God, you know, before they really knew, they said, um, you know, this was a woman, she killed her boyfriend. It was a domestic issue and so on. And of course, that turned out not to be true. There was, there was a man who she shot but um, it wasn't someone that she knew, although I still wonder whether it's going to turn out that that was a man who she spoke to on the phone when she was trying to get YouTube to uh, to fix her, you know, to stop taking viewers away, although, you know, probably it wasn't. It was just a random man. But that is the typical thing, that it's a woman who gets, because the woman has to be very passionate, whether it's because of paranoia or because she's been uh, jilted by a man. There has to be something especially passionate and strong to get her to use a gun. So is there anything to be learned from this, realistically? <laughs> well, um, I mean, I, I, I think one thing that should be learned, you know, I'm sure, you know, there have been all kinds of different reports, but I think that the police, similar to Nicholas Cruz, where we missed a lot of red flags, I think that the police missed the red flags when they stopped her parked in the parking lot at 1.40 in the morning, you know, in a deserted parking lot, um, spoke to her, although it's, you know, we have different, she wouldn't answer their questions, but they say that they spoke to her for 20 minutes. They apparently, she didn't say anything about YouTube, but they had been warned by her family, and I know that there's some, some they're disputing that too as to whether they told them that she was going to be violent. I mean, the thing to do um, in a normal situation like that is to, to they should have been able to tell 
the signs of mental illness when they talked to her, if they talked, actually talked to her for 20 minutes, and they didn't look in the car. If they would have looked in the car, they would have found a gun. All right, so but, 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 but let me interrupt you there, because I'm wondering if this goes back to what you were saying earlier, that, that uh, because they were dealing with a woman, is it possible the police just didn't really figure that this is a person capable of the kind of violent act that happened at YouTube? Yes, absolutely. I think that that, um, you know, that certainly played into it. But you know what? Even if, even if they didn't think that, um, certainly a woman, you know, who's been reported missing, sleeping at one point in the morning in a Walmart parking lot, they should have taken her into an emergency room for a mental health check, if nothing else. It's Dr. Carol Lieberman, forensic psychiatrist in Beverly Hills.